Hello everyone, I'm Norman Balberger, and we're learning how to play Go. Today I want to show you another classic game going back to China, also around the 1600 Qing Dynasty. But before I do that, I want to uh, have a, just a brief discussion about an important point, which um, I'm going to try to convince you that it's really important to uh, to watch these games, okay, when you're learning, first learning how to play Go. So one of my viewers, Sebastian Derricks, in a uh, previous video had the following comment. He said that for him it has become actually quite challenging to follow the last two videos on opening theory because all the moves look very similar to me. I cannot really understand why a certain move you show would be much better than a move next to it in many cases. This makes the opening theory feel quite random. This was opposite to the videos on creating two eyes when concrete calculation showed a certain move superior over the others. So a very good point, very good um, question. And uh, you have to understand that Go, while it has a strong technical aspect, there's a lot of computation and working out uh, you know, possibilities. There's also um, a more large scale, almost intuitive or maybe even aesthetic aspect. And this is much harder to, to grasp, and certainly without uh, really high quality instruction, or at least being able to watch a lot of games and see how other people play, it's very hard to develop this. So if you're just sort of learning how to play Go and you're only playing with a bunch of friends who are also learning how to play Go, your level, unfortunately, is not going to get very high, even if you play a lot and really put a lot of effort into it. Really good players, the, the professionals, uh, start at a very young age. So in China, Korea, Japan, Taiwan, there are professionals. And often by the time they're, they're 10 years old, they're better than, than a, a reasonably good amateur like myself. And then that's sort of the start of their professional career. And then they you know, spend huge amounts of time and study after that. So how is it possible for like, uh, you know, a 10-year-old uh, child to get so good at it? Well, I was in Japan a few years ago, and I like to visit Go Clubs when I'm there, and I chanced upon a club and was able to play a, a precocious six-year-old. Okay, this is a young Japanese fellow. Uh, and we had a game, it was an even game, and I ended up winning, but it was a pretty tight game. And uh, it was just really incredible to me to think that a six-year-old um, child you know, that's sort of at the level where you're learning how to do basic arithmetic, you know, in, in school. You haven't yet advanced to fractions, yet they're playing this incredibly technical game, and he's making this really these high-quality judgments and able to, to work through really intricate patterns. So how is that possible? It's a really interesting question, okay? It's a really interesting question, and it, it's something special, I think, about Go. Although we could also find something similar in chess, and probably in, in the arts, like in music especially, where you know really precocious talent is able to do things at a very early age. But in Go, an essential ingredient is that these kids have watched good players, maybe their, their fathers or uncles or, or grandparents, whatever, playing Go, and they're just watching it, and they're seeing the patterns. And they may not understand the significance of the moves, but they learn the shapes, and they, they learn sort of instinctively what feels right and what feels not right before they've perhaps been given an official explanation about every move. And so to a certain extent, I want to try to give you some of that too. I want to expose you to good play right from the bat, and you don't necessarily have to understand everything. So we're going to go through this game. It's a game um, featuring two um, very prominent um, Chinese players, and um, one of them's name is Guo Bailing, and the other's name is Wang Hanian. Okay, and this was played some sometime around the, probably the early 1600s. So Guo, Guo Boling um, lived approximately from 1586 to 1662, and Wang Hanian. Um, I don't see a dates for him, but he would have you know, been around at the same time. Okay, so one of the features of uh, Chinese Go at that time was that um, even games were set out with this particular configuration to start with. So two black stones on opposite um, diagonal star points and two white stones on opposite diagonal star points. And curiously, white gets to play first. So white here is Guo Bai Ling, and I'm... So white is getting to play. So white plays here first. So you're going to see some 
standard Joseki. Some of them may uh, appear a little bit uh, familiar. Others might be a little bit uh, novelty, but uh, it'll, it'll be uh, interesting for us. All right, so uh, white starts there and black um, plays on top. This is a very standard attachment. And white plays here and black extends. Great. And then white plays here and black plays here. And uh, now this is, a this is a very common pattern that's even seen today, and it's something that you can play in your games. And white often plays this, uh, and the bots really like this, to try to make some thickness and uh, to the sides, and also try to sort of exploit that black has a potential weakness here. There's a potential cut here. On the other hand, white also has a potential cut, so they both have potential cuts. So black plays strongly with the Hane wrapping around the head of these two stones, and white also plays strongly cutting. Now, in this position, a uh, way to, to uh, sort of deal with this cut is uh, to play here. So this is a very solid bamboo uh, joint, but it doesn't put that much pressure on, on this stone. And this is the, the, the nicer play. And then white responds by playing here. So now threatening to capture these two stones with an Atari here. And black prevents that capture because, of course, you can't have these two stones killed because then all these things are linked up and this cut becomes meaningless and this cut here evaporates too. So uh, both players are, are struggling to not let their opponents uh, make an easy connection. Okay, white jumps out here. And then black uh, plays here, making a nice, solid, actually quite big uh, territory down here. So territorially, black is happy. Uh, but, you know, white has this sort of potential here. This stone here, we'll still see what's going to happen with that. All right, white makes nice shape. So this is another, it's the same kind of uh, pattern that we saw down here. It's a nice uh, shape move, sort of coming out here, preventing um, black from uh, sort of destroying the shape here. And black wants to preserve the life of this cutting stone, right? Uh, white, black does not want white to connect, so black extends. And now white is going to pressure these two stones, um, at the same time hopefully creating some uh, territory here on the left-hand side. Okay, so that move there, so black has to run out, okay? And now white makes this connection. Remember the importance of connection. This is a cut, so black is, you know, potentially able to cut here, in which case there's a lot of weaknesses in white's position. So this uh, sort of deals with um, some of them at least. And now black uh, plays here, um, sort of just forcing white um, like this. And black actually plays a quite strong move like this. This is a bit uh, interesting. Um, white Ataris and um, black comes back. And now white wants to defend this uh, cut here right this group here has to has to get out but one way of getting out is to lean on the stones that are that are already strong so this is already a strong position so it makes sense for white to lean on that but black is not responding as, as you or i might by playing down here or something black plays a strong cut now white cannot capture this thing um either way so uh so white okay let's black come out and and then white connects and now of course white is threatening to to eat this stone and then reduce the uh, the territory here on the other hand if black defends here white is going to come out here and, and, and move towards this stone so at this stage black has to decide which is more important to to maintain this big corner territory or to play on the outside and prevent white from easily linking up Black decides this is more important. This is, this is consistent with this wall that he's building with these black stones, right? So it does give uh, white the ability to eat this stone, um, but then black can go like this, which uh, still keeps the corner territory, so black's uh, group is still safe, and, uh, and so white has not gained that much. Okay, but white can still move uh, in this direction, and black will, um, well, black place here like this is, again is something I'm not sure I would be able to do um, because also black's position has uh, quite a lot of weaknesses this is a cutting point uh, so in principle separating this group from this group so both players are sort of on the thin edge of, of disaster but they're strong players okay white actually cuts here okay what's going to happen here um, so okay there's a bit of fighting black Ataris uh, and then Ataris also on this side 
and then black goes here and white goes. Now black is creating, it looks like another group down here, which seems to have sort of, um, now, you know, now this white group is completely surrounded. This is, this is very intense fighting. So uh, both players will have had to read out what's going on here um, very extensively. They, they're probably spending hours on, on, on this game. So, you know, uh, it's probably uh, it's a very serious uh, calculation going on here. Okay, so black uh, plays here. So you, maybe you don't understand all of these moves. There's just some fighting um, going on. And um, then... Black plays here, white limits black in the corner, and now black makes an eye, you see? And this group now is safe because it actually has two eyes. You might say, where are the two eyes? Well, this is one possible eye, okay? So if white plays here, however, black can play here and then over here to make an other eye here. So either this point or this point is gonna be a second eye for black. So this group is safe. That means that this white group now is in serious, you know, has some serious issues because um, you know, um, well, it has to make eyes as well. So white is going to play here. Okay, that's preventing black from making an eye on this side, which forces black to make an eye there. You see, so this um, making eyes here is, is, is crucial, okay? <clears throat> and now white um, plays here. This is also a forcing move. It helps white on this side, and it's a forcing move because if black doesn't respond here, then white will play here, making this a false eye, and then this group will be dead. So black has to respond there. Now, white is going to uh, come back here and take this stone, but before white first makes some forcing moves on the outside, okay? Um, so if black uh, comes out down here and, and re removes uh, the, the two eyes down here, then uh, white will cut here and, and just come out the outside. So this, this is a forcing move. And then white uh, pushes here uh, once and then captures that. So there is an eye and there's another eye here. So white has a just a bare minimum of two eyes. This black group just has a bare minimum of two eyes. And this black group still has a reasonable corner territory, but you know, white can still maybe make some incursions there. Now, Black is going to make a forcing move because this is a forcing move. If um, white doesn't play here, then that will create a uh, false eye there. So white has to defend here. This is a good exchange for black because this is making territory. This is just uh, sort of a neutral point. And now black has to worry about these five stones. This is a clique just sort of floating around. So black plays here, Atari, and now these uh, these two stones are captured. If white comes out here, then black can... Uh, can capture them uh, with a gate out here. So so now this black uh, group is more or less settled. So very exciting. Now white is going to push on this thing here. So white plays a few um, forcing moves here at Hane. And black really has to uh, defend here. Otherwise, the white clamp here um, is, is, is very painful and probably kills um, or almost kills the group. So black plays here. Now this has a nice shape. This is two eyes. So this group now is safe. Okay, so this group is safe, this group is safe, this group is safe. This group, it looks like it's pretty safe, and this group is pretty safe too. So all the groups now have sort of stabilized, and now the players can turn to making territory or reducing the other person's territory. So it's White's turn. White plays a big approach move here. And instead of responding, um, Black decides that Playing here is most important because white is, with one more move here or here, uh, white is going to swallow this entire side. So black thinks it's rather urgent to prevent white from doing that. Okay, so um, white goes here to prevent black from making a base. And of course, then black has to jump out. Black could either go into the corner and jump out, but okay, jumping out first. And now white plays this rather um, strong um, move. So white wants to push black towards the, the strength of these um, of these stones, okay? So if white is able to do that and sort of create a few more stones over here, then white will have a potential for a biggish territory up on the top. Okay, so black doesn't want to go along with that. So black plays here, and then white um, solidly uh, connects back here, and then we get a sequence that looks like this. Um, black plays here, white in the corner, trying to prevent um, black from making an easy life. Black cuts, white extends. This is sort of inviting 
Um, black to take a, a small life on the side here, while white will take uh, this upper part, and that's sort of what happens. So we get this sort of standard exchange. These are all nice moves. Um, this move here threatens these three stones, so, so white um, captures uh, that stone there. And it's black's turn, and black plays here. Okay. So uh, if I was black, I would probably play here to ensure the life of this uh, group. Um, okay, actually, so uh, next next turn, white actually takes that stone. Okay, black Ataris. Okay, and now at any uh, point, um, white can take this stone. If white takes this stone, then black can make a second eye here. So black has one eye here. Okay, and can make a second die either here or by taking this stone. But white doesn't commit himself to either one of these options. So white keeps this in reserve. So maybe later white will want to play something around here to remove the possibility of this item. That might be sort of useful to come through here and cut or something. So white just leaves this as it is and invades the corner. Okay, and um, white comes out here and we have this exchange. This is a little bit of an unusual move, but it's possible. And and black plays that, and now white plays this very strong cut. Okay, this is a, a fighting thing. So uh, okay, so some fighting going on. Here's an Atari, and then white um, comes out here. So these five stones here are without a base. Um, white is looking maybe to a, to keep these stones and this stone separate, and uh, you know. Um, there's all kinds of things that can happen here. Um, but black decides to come out here first, and then white strengthens his stones here. So what's going to happen? Well, first black plays here to make some space for eyes in the corner, and then Atari's here. Okay. And then we have this move here. This move actually threatens to take these two stones if black plays here, it threatens there. So, so white... Um, uh, actually defends by, by coming out here. It's an interesting move. And, and black uh, cuts with Atari. So white connects. And then black comes here. So now these, these um, stones are also um, in dire threat. Um, but black is weak on the outside. So this is a major fight. And if you're a beginner, you're not going to understand this, okay? Or at least not completely. But you can just watch and sort of be excited by the, the drama. All right, so we have a cut... And then, so these three stones are now in direct threat of death. If white plays here, then they are going to be killed. So now black plays here. This is a geta. We've talked about this before. This is a loose capturing of this white stone. Okay. So white comes out here, black blocks. So this uh, is captured. Now white has to rescue these stones. So Atari here. And black pulls out. And then here. And now... Now, now these stones are are in, in need of attention because now this group is is out, or at least partially out. So now this group here has to make life, and um, black plays here then, and that now puts pressure on these stones because they need to uh, not be surrounded. So white plays here. This gives time then black for black to come back out here, further threatening these guys. White has to crawl. Um, black pushes here once, that's a threatening Atari on those stones, so white has to connect. And black pushes once more. Okay, and okay, white is um, forcing, playing this for, forcing move first. So this is a forcing move because it threatens Atari on these three pivotal black stones. If white plays here, they're, they're going to die. So black has to uh, defend that. And, and here's a nice way of defending with what's called a bamboo joint. Okay, these, these stones here are connected with these stones. If white plays one of these intermediate points, then black can play the other. So this maintains the capture of this stone. And now we have uh, one more push another push here and white now there so white is now connected over here and finally black comes back and plays this move which captures these two stones so you can try to work it out um, there's no way that white can escape with these two stones so these uh, black stones are uh, in fact connected with these stones connected with these stones so this is all one um, happy um, black group 
Okay, so now white says, okay, I'm going to now settle this. I'm gonna take this stone, which is big territorially, and that forces black to um, play here. Okay, so that's settled now, so black is safe here. And now white plays here. Okay, um, uh, that seems to be some kind of a sort of sacrifice. Um, oh, that might be to prevent black from making uh, exact uh, eye so easily, but anyway, let's see what happens. Okay, white wants to uh, make some forcing, or white wants to make some forcing moves uh, uh, around the outside. So, like this move here helps him making a big territory here. So black comes out once. Okay, and white comes again. White is wanting black to sort of be forced to take some of these stones away, giving him time to to make a wall here that'll make this really huge. But black reckons that. Now these things are safe. If white actually plays here, what happens? Um, I guess black can play here. That looks, yeah, that, that captures those stones. Okay, so that, so, so yes, indeed. Um, black does not have to play an extra move there. And black has time to invade here. Okay, white plays here first, which threatens uh, this stone coming out with Atari. So white plays here, now it's Atari, so then black will have to play here, and then white can come out, and that would be uh, not good for black. So white uh, is forcing black more or less to defend this here. And that, uh, okay, that allows white to make a strong shape here. So this thing here is sort of putting pressure on, on this, and so this is a way for uh, white to, to settle himself and, and, and create some territory on this side. But it does give black a chance to make an extension. But that's as far as you're going to get, says white. Um, so that's a nice move to block black from the, the corner. And now also black has to worry about these two stones because uh, they don't have two eyes yet. And they're sort of surrounded. Well, not entirely surrounded, but there's a, a sea of strong white stones around. So black first pushes, okay, and then plays here, threatening to capture this stone if Black captures this stone, then getting pretty close to having two eyes. And however, white decides to um, play here um, first. And what happens? Black plays here. Oh, no, not, not there, sorry. Uh, black plays here. And, and now, okay, yes, white plays here. This is a... Just maintaining connection. So white does not want black to surround him. And conversely, white wants to keep this group here separated. So right now, this, this group here is is, uh, is weakened and black has to do something. And of course, the obvious thing to do is to take this stone to, um, to make one eye there. And there's another eye right over here. So this, here's another eye. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the end of the game. That's the end of the recorded game, and it doesn't tell me who won, okay? So it's uh, possible this is just where the game record uh, ends, um, and I don't know who won. So let's have a look at the position. Uh, we've got some black territory here, a few stones captured here, a small thing here, a few stones captured here. Okay, a very minimal amount of territory here, a small amount here. So black has a lot of little positions. White has this this is a decent sized territory small position here and this is not not too bad because white is going to be able to play here this is a forcing move so white will probably do that soon anyway and then uh, so white gets some territory here and here and, and this is not too bad and there's still um there's still a bit of uh, territory up here so um of course it still depends on what's happening here but uh you know, probably my instinct because this is still a weak so so white could play here and and then play here um and it's, it's White's move, so I, I guess I would be slightly uh, in favor of, of, of White. Although Black has some, some I guess, further potential in, in, the, um, in the center here, so one would have to think about that. Anyway, so I hope you enjoyed that game between uh, Guo Bailing and Wang Hanian, two uh, prominent Chinese players in the uh, early part of the Qing Dynasty around 1600.